Most Canadians know Sir John A. Macdonald as the country's first prime minister, but he was also an MP for Victoria, and his statue has been standing here for more than 35 years, but likely not much longer. In order to really commit to reconciliation, uh, we need to remove the statue of Johnny McDonald from the front steps of City Hall. The driving force of Confederation is going into storage because of a history that's not celebrated. The fact that his government created the Indian Act and established the residential school system where thousands were abused and generations of trauma followed. The decision to move the statue was made by a group called the City Family. It's made up of local officials and members from nearby First Nations, and their whole focus is on reconciliation. And one of the issues that came up was that some of the members were very uncomfortable walking past this statue and into City Hall. Inside this building is an Indigenous exhibit dedicated to reconciliation, and one of the artists behind it says it was time for the statue to go. What is really important to me about this statue being removed is that it's the local Indigenous nations, the Lekwungen nations known today as the Squamalt and Songhees, who have asked and pushed for this to be removed. The plan is to take down the statue on Saturday and put up a plaque saying that the city is trying to figure out how to put his legacy into context. The decision has to be voted on by city council first. And while it's expected to pass, not everyone agrees. I don't like that it's happened so suddenly. I think it is an issue that deserves uh, public discussion. And there is plenty of debate. History is with us and I think they should uh, consider that in addition to being politically sensitive. Often you hear this that's an erasure of history but um, you know definitely a, a more modern approach to it and looking at it I, I think so. I think it's a good thing. Because he believes McDonald should be remembered for all of his contributions to Canada instead of just being unquestionably revered. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Victoria. Canadian history is full of polarizing figures, many of them recognized despite the repression of Indigenous people, and that has meant a major rethink. <laughs> Until January, this statue of Edward Cornwallis had stood in a Halifax park for nearly nine decades. But the city founder also put a bounty on the scalps of Mi'kmaq people. The council voted the bronze figure be taken down. This statue of BC's first chief justice was recently removed from the Law Society's foyer. Matthew Begbie was nicknamed the hanging judge for sentencing six Indigenous chiefs to death in the pre-Confederation days. Thank you so much for changing that name. That's a big thing, because that's part of reconciliation. Last year, the Prime Minister stripped the name off the building that houses his office. Hector Louis Langevin was a member of Sir John A's cabinet and an architect of the residential school system. And speaking of schools, Toronto's Ryerson University has been under real pressure to change its name. Egerton Ryerson may have been a pioneer of public education, but he also helped shape policy for residential schools.